name is Jenna Arbuckle. I am from Omaha, Nebraska, and I am currently a zoo science student at Friends University in Wichita, Kansas. Um, I actually made the move here almost a year ago now. Um, today I will be speaking to you about the ringtail lemur, as you can see. Um, it'll last about five to six minutes, um, and I'm glad I got this opportunity to speak with all of you guys and see all of you. Um, we are going to be talking about the physical adaptations of the ringtail lemur and how they will influence them and their daily lives. Um, before I start, does anyone know what adaptations are? Yeah. The physical changes that a species has to help them. Yes, good job. Yeah, so basically it's different physical things they'll have that can aid in either their daily lives, mating, um, can help in their reproduction, um, collecting a food, pretty much anything. Um, so first I will start by asking, does anyone know what a ringtail lemur is? I mean, it's up there, so it's pretty easy, but does anyone know any of them? I don't know, maybe, possibly. The one I was personally thinking of is a pretty famous one. I heard somebody mention it earlier. That was King Julian. Um, and that is from a popular movie, uh, Madagascar. There's multiple of them. He actually has his own movie or TV show now. Um, so he's pretty famous. Um, and just like in the movie title, M Madagascar is their home. Um, that's where you can find all of them. Even though they are pretty endangered right now, you can still see quite a few of them. And we also have some at the zoo here. Over time, they have ad adapted to many of the changes they have experienced due to humans or due to their natural environment just changing naturally. Uh, the first one I will speak about is how they travel throughout the treetops. Um, lemurs, they jump and climb throughout different trees. Um, Ringtail lemurs are actually one of the only lemurs that will also travel on the ground. Um, other lemurs, they will pretty much stay in the treetops. They will stay up high. They don't really like to travel on the ground, but ringtails will travel on the ground. Um, in order to be able to climb throughout the branches and walk on the floor, they have an adaptation for that. Um, they have a claw on each of their back feet. It helps them better grip and it helps them be able to kind of like claw into the trees to better grip so that they can climb without risk falling, um, kind of hold on to themselves. And then the rest of theirs, um, paws just have regular nails. They don't have that really long claw that's only on their back feet. Um, it'll help them climb. It helps them jump. Um, it helps them hold balance when they're eating or sitting. Um, it also helps the young hold on to their parents. A lot of times when they travel through treetops, the young will hold on to their mother, um, sometimes the father, but typically the mother as they jump so that the young doesn't have to try to keep up with them because it's a lot harder since they're so much smaller. Um, they will also travel with their back legs mostly, which means that their back legs have most of the muscle. Their back legs are a little bit longer than their front um, and they contain most of that muscle. That way, one, they're able to jump off. Two, they're also able to walk upright just like you and me. And then we will also talk about what they're really known for, which is the rings on their tails. Um, they're pretty distinct. Um, average, they have about 13 rings on every lemur's tail. I'm not sure why 13, but it's just the magic number for them. Um, the tails also considered as an adaptation. They help them with keeping balance when they are traveling, walking, sitting, um, just kind of something to keep them there. And then they also help them with mating. Um, they have scent glands on the palms, on their wrists, and they will actually, once the gland is creating the scent, they will rub it on their tails and then they will kind of wave them like a flag to try to attract any mates. Um, so that'd be kind of like us wiping our sweat on ourselves and then going up to people and like fanning it towards them, which is kind of weird. Um, but you know, it works for them. And then with their tails, they also wave them like flags so that they can find each other. Um, since they're so distinctive compared to leaves or branches, they're able to just kind of wave them and they are able to find each other. And then these are just a few of the physical adaptations that they do have. These are pretty much the main key ones. Um, they also have other behavioral adaptations that are non-physical. 
And then most of these adaptations, since they are physical, you'll be able to see them if you visit them at the zoo. Um, you can visit them here pretty much any time. They're pretty cool to see. Um, they have a pretty good habitat here. And then a lot of people have asked, you know, um, what can we do to help them because they are endangered. They're pretty much almost gone and we wouldn't want to have to live in the world without them. Um, so with their population decreasing, there's not much, you know, we can physically go out there and do just because a lot of it is due to deforestation and we're in college right now, but there's a lot we can do while we're here. Um, you know, we can donate to nonprofits, we can come visit at the zoo, um, we can learn more about them, spread more awareness, um, you know, try to spread awareness to companies that are doing that main deforestation toward them. And then um, just today by being here, you are supporting them, learning about them, and then, you know, seeing them at the zoo and supporting our zoo. And then I just wanted to thank you all for letting me speak to you, and I wanted to know if anyone had any questions.